And we're back with some more oxygen not included on Oasis. Now in this in this particular episode, I want to take care of one of those big problems that's been cropping up, carbon dioxide. It's been, well, it's been getting a little bit dense in here. Also, I went over some math with uh, Cohen and Theon in the comments, and uh, yeah, I don't have enough sixers to take care of all the CO2. And even with two gas pumps, I'm not going to be able to keep up with CO2 production. So instead of just running another couple of gas pumps right now, what I'm going to do is uh, do a little bit of an overflow system here, or, well, a buffer system. I want to have a few tanks of petroleum backed up just in case anything goes wrong. So that's the first thing we're going to install. Yeah, I'm going to put in a little... Oh, did you trap yourself? You, you've trapped yourself, haven't you? Yeah. You, you know what? Let's uh, let's get a priority six here to make sure that duplicate can get out of there. Otherwise, they'll never get to lunch. Oh, great. They're going to wall them in, aren't they? Yep. <laughs> Yeah, perfect. Just perfect. In that case, um, okay, that uh, that pitcher pump should hopefully get get them out of there before they they run into any problems. Excellent. Okay. What I want to do is have uh, an overflow system that will fill this up. I want well, I do want access to some petroleum when the time comes. So what we're going to do is put in a little bit of automation, uh, just so, and this will also give us somewhere to dump our petroleum when we're not using it. No, I don't want to waste anything good. We'll go with lead. Lead is cheap and plentiful. And uh, we'll have to put in a liquid shutoff here. And uh, that liquid shutoff will help us stop too much excess petroleum getting in there. And uh, then a quick piping setup. Yeah, we don't really need any special piping for this or any insulated piping. Reason being, this is all inside a vacuum. Oh, that reminds me. Just in case that vacuum does break, I want to seal that off. If any gas... How is there sour gas in here? Oh no. How did sour gas get into my boiler? Hmm, one second. So it was the blob of oil that did me in again. Okay, that is really frustrating. Hmm. I need to think of some way around that. So, I need to think of a way to stop this. Ah. The second theory, my theory was that the door opening and closing here was what was pushing the blob of oil. The second theory was that sometimes the magma interacts with the, the blob of oil when it's falling past. That must have been what happened. That must be what's happening in this case. So I'm going to make a bit of a modification here. It's going to require a little bit of a movement of this airlock, but it should be doable. I'll just uh, move this airlock back and then... Yeah. Yeah, I think this will work. So to put this into effect, I'm going to need to move the entire liquid lock back one step. To do that, I've sealed this off from here just in case I accidentally let in a big blob of oxygen. Currently, there's so little sour gas in here that it's not transferring too much heat. Uh, as well as that, I've walled, I, this was walled in already, thankfully I re-walled this, or I remember to, so none of the sour gas got into our magma chamber, which is good, because if that happened, we'd have some very, very, very hot sour gas, even in small amounts, that would still be dangerous. Now what I want to do is move this liquid lock back one step. Uh, to do that, do I want to move this first? You know what, I'll put in a tile there, and then we're going to deconstruct this and put in another tile there. This should theoretically work. Oh, you know what, deconstruct that as well while we're at it. If I can put in a tile there, that might make this a bit faster. And this should give us a liquid lock without having broken the old one. Well, theoretically. So I'll place that block in there, then I can deconstruct this block. Once that's done, we should have a fully functional liquid lock. But just one tile back, and we haven't broken the seal. Uh, so far. Ah, one move liquid lock. No damage, no harm, no foul. This is working out reasonably well. Though I'll probably have to move this ladder one tile to the left. Not a big deal. That should only be a, a quick construction project. Though, of course, while all this is going on, my carbon dioxide levels are still getting more and more out of control, but we've got time, we've got time. And it's all coming together nicely. Uh, I will have to do some automation rewiring, and... Oh, what temperature is this at? Okay, we've got 60 degrees worth of temperature to work with before this is going to cycle, so I've got to do this really quickly. Otherwise, it could interfere and I'll drop in fresh magma in there without mining out what's in. Hmm, one moment while I do a little bit of jury rigging. So, I've moved the mining drill back one tile. However, it can still access the, the two tiles down here. So I'll put a drop of crude oil here. It should be far enough away from the magma that it should never flash again. Well, that's the theory. Uh, it... Surprisingly simple. It doesn't make it a little bit bulkier, but, eh, c'est la vie. Eh, we'll make that right there. Deconstruct the last of the wires. Now all i got to do is get some water in here to do, or get a, a drop of crude oil in here, or petroleum, either or. All I need to do to do that is I need to wall this across here. And once it's walled across, I can drop in the blob of oil, sweep up the, or mop up the bits that are excess. But I don't want to do that just yet. Um, 
there's only 20 degrees of or 40 degrees of temperature left there i want to i want to wait until this is cycled out and we've got uh, a bit of time to work with i, I don't want to be rushing against the clock not with something that expensive and oh yeah i need to put in a gas pump in here don't i yeah we need to start uh, venting this place out uh, that'll take care of all the sour gas in there it'll take a bit of time but eh. now down here i want to do the same thing i'm going to put in a gas pump I'm not even going to try and do it uh, too efficiently. I just want to get uh, most of it out. So we'll just throw in that there. Pretty much anywhere. I really don't care at this point. The amount of gas in here is tiny, so it's not transferring much heat. And uh, that should... Yeah, that should seal that off. Now, once that's done, we want to get around to changing these uh, liquid reservoirs so we actually have some storage. I think I'm going to want a decent amount. So we'll just put a couple more there. What are those temp temperature these things at? 45C. Okay, there's so little gas in here, it's not transferring much temperature to them. To them, That's that's good. We can work with that. I will need to probably turn off the petroleum boiler just for a little bit while I hook this up. We can put in the, the bulk of the piping. Uh, ooh, we'll have one come out there. One second. Okay, I think I've got this figured out. Oh. What I'm going to want to do is put in a liquid over a liquid bridge about there. Then I'm going to want to deconstruct the liquid pipe in the middle of it so we actually get some flow out of there. Then this will be our overflow pipe. Now, this overflow pipe is going to have a couple of options. One of them is if there's an overflow, as in we have and we filled up the system, the rest of it will go over here, where we can dump it in to fill up this area. However, if that also fills up and doesn't want any more, we'll have the rest of it come down here and feed onto this tank. Uh, to try and follow this, let me try and explain it. Mm, it's all going to look kind of rather messy. The petroleum is going to try and fill up all five of these tanks, or six. If all six of these back up, it'll overflow and go over here. And if this uh, tank is not full, or you know, up to here, where we can pump out some petroleum if we need it, then it will keep going in here until this is full. Once this is full, it will start overflowing down this side and try to get into this tank. If this tank is full, I'm going to put in an automation sensor here to turn on the petroleum generators. That way, even if things go horribly wrong, I should have five tanks of petroleum backed up just in case there's a, any interruption in flow. There shouldn't be, theoretically, but you never know. Uh, first things first though, I want to make sure those are priority six. I'm going to need them done immediately, because if I don't fix those up, it'll the petroleum won't be able to evacuate from the tank. Like right now, yeah, there's no petroleum coming in. Come on, finish that. How much petroleum we got backed up in there? Yeah, we'll be fine. It's just once this... That can't go up to a thousand. Come on. Is, is someone going to build that? Come on. Oh, yeah. I'm going to mop that up too. Dope. And I even queued up that tile to stop this from happening, flowing down. Completely forgot about it. Oh well, almost done, but I'm pretty sure these uh, these ore tanks are going to keep overheating until I rip them up and replace them. Yeah, I'm going to have to replace all of those, aren't I? What's that one at for? Yeah, this can work. This can probably work? Yeah, we'll deconstruct all of these. I have to deconstruct them. Once they've got heat in them, I have no way of cooling them down. Yeah, once this, that's also going to stop the flow. Should I use steel? You know what? I'm going to use gold amalgam. Gold amalgam should be just the right temperature. There's no point wasting any more steel. I'm I'm a little bit crazy when it comes to steel at the moment. The amount I'm spending. Yeah, I'm also going to have to make these a high priority because uh, the system won't flow if there's no liquid reservoirs in place. And there we go. Petroleum's flowing again. The system backed up by more than I would like. That's, that's too much petroleum in the system. I might want to turn this off just a smidge. Uh, Uh, I really don't like this. If I do this wrong, I'm going to cause broken pipes, but I don't want the system overflowing. That would be bad. Now, down here, to make sure we don't spend too much petroleum, we're going to have to hook up some automation wire to these generators. No, not using steel. There we go. Oop, no, uh, we'll bring you down through here and plug you into that battery. And this battery will be set to, say, ooh, 6090. Yeah, that seems reasonable. That should slow down petroleum consumption. Now, has this thing caught up yet? No, still too much petroleum left in the system. Once that's caught up, I'll turn the petroleum boiler back on again, hopefully for the last time. 
Uh, oh, and I still gotta hook up the left of this plumbing, don't I? You know what? Let's let this empty out a bit, maybe. Yeah, that should drain the system pretty nicely. And once it's drained, I can remove these pipes without spilling even more petroleum into the system. And there's the remodel complete. Now, oh, yeah, I should really turn back on the petroleum boiler again. Uh, how much liquid we got there? Yeah, I think it's cleared out. I'm just worried that the, the first batch of crude to go through here has the potential to boil in the pipes, and then I'm going to have to go in through these doors and repair it. Yeah, those doors are locked. Good, good. Um, So... The system is set up so that the petroleum will come down here and flow through the system. If it ever flows up, it will activate this signal which will tell the system to turn on and burn off all the petroleum it can. And to do that, we're going to have to run probably the longest automation wire I've done in a while. Uh, yeah, we're going to run you down here. Uh, where is... yeah, we need to get over to these petroleum generators over here. I might just go left. You know what? That seems like a good idea. Let's... Uh, mm. we'll go through here. So, nice long wire all the way around the edges. And we'll come down the sides. Yeah, we can come down here. Oop, nope, hit the alerts. There. That should turn on the system to burn off the excess petroleum. So all we're doing here is, once all of these tanks are backed up, a signal will be sent onto the petroleum generator saying to turn on and just start working. That will help us burn off any excess petroleum so we won't have any too much sitting around. We need to do that because we need to be generating CO2 to feed the slicksters. Oh, which reminds me I should... Oh, wow, I have lots of eggs back up in here. I should really be using uh, molten eggs. You can do molten eggs, continuous incubate. And you will just do a larva egg. Uh, just a larva egg, though. I need to get some more. I, I want as many moltens as I possibly can. I want to phase out the regular slicksters. Now, that should be that done once that automation wire is finished. How are we looking on that front? Yep, yeah, it'll take a minute or two. But that should be that. Now, uh, up here, has this cycled out yet? Yep, that's cycled out. Time to fix this problem. To fix this, I'm just going to dump a little blob of petroleum down here. Well, I'm I'm going to stop that petroleum from landing on this, uh, on this igneous rock down here. That would be bad. That would just flash it immediately to sour gas. But uh, we'll block this off, drop a blob of oil down here, and then we'll wipe up the rest of it. And once we've removed that uh, mess, we can then open the system back up again. Currently, there's plenty of temperature left in this rock. Where am I getting the petroleum from? Exit line down here. I can reverse the flow when the time comes and dump it all back out of the system. For the time being, I just need enough to get a, a single drop over here. And here comes our savior of petroleum. Now, let's make sure we haven't left anything that could cause problems. No, I think we're good. We just deconstruct this liquid pipe at the end. That will drop down our little blob of petroleum. Then we can get on with our day. Why is that? Oh, it's going to delete the liquid bridge. Yep, no, that's fine. Perfect. Blob of petroleum acquired. Now we'll just mop up the mess. Once the mess is mopped up, we can get on with this. Uh, oh, and we can reverse the flow on this. I don't think we need to. Oh, wait, no, I need to get rid of this. I shouldn't need to do these liquid bridge tricks anymore. Well, the one at the far end. I should only have to do that and it should fix it, but old habits die hard, I suppose. Okay, one very, very important thing, because this has caught me before, make sure you sweep this up. If I delete that block now, that petroleum will land right there, and even though it's in a container, it will immediately flash to sour gas, and I'll be, yep, kicking myself again. Oh, how are we looking on vacuum style in there? Yeah, that that's going to take a while, there's still too much in there. Over here, yeah, that's going to take even longer. You know what, I'm, I'm happy to let them pump away for as long as needs be. There's so little in there, it's not transferring any heat. Uh, how are we doing? Okay, you need to get swept up at a high priority, and then we can finish this. And now we're almost ready to let this system go back to being totally unmanaged. And that should be it. As you can see, yeah, good to go. That igneous rock, it can stay there. I don't care. Oh, and there's sour gas in there. You know what? Until this is empty, I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, how much is in there? Eh, uh, milligram. Micrograms, milligrams. I don't think that should be a big deal. I could crush it right now. You know what? That might be an idea. I'm going to crush it right now and not have to worry about it. Uh, put one in there, one there. Deconstruct that. This is diagonal building. You can build stuff in diagonally and crush the stuff that's in there. Mm, that's what I did with the sporkids down in the oil biome. Uh, someone was on about how did I get rid of the sporkids down in the oil biome. And it was just a case of diagonal building like this until the sporkids were no longer an issue. Uh, maybe the dupe needs to stand there. Can they get that? Unreachable build. 
once that ladder segment goes in, they should be fine. So where was the oil biome? Yeah, it was down here somewhere. There was some, I think there was some sporkids over here. All you do is you just build the Agni in. For example, if you wanted to build this across here and seal it all off, you could just queue up a bunch of bricks. Oop, cancel that last one. Then you would just dig in at the edges here. So you would come in from this side, and then you could diagonally build that block. Once that block is built, you deconstruct these two blocks and go in through the next, and you just slowly one brick at a time. It's slow, painful manual labor, but sometimes it's really handy, especially when you're dealing with high temperature situations or spore kids. Oh, and that's right, actually. Dustin Edwards in the comments points. Dustin Edward in the comments pointed out, it's spore kid, not spore child. I was calling them spore child for some reason. Uh, thankfully, someone in the comments said, yeah, that happened to them as well. But uh, it turns out it's not Spore Child, it's Sporkid. Orchid? Sporkid. Well, anyway, so long as that all works out. Uh, now, this is fixed, that's fixed. We've got an overflow system in place. We're actually stockpiling petroleum now. And since we're stockpiling petroleum... Why is that petroleum generator on? Oh, yeah. We're stockpiling petroleum so long as the generators are not necessary. And most of the time, the generators are not necessary. That means we're going to stockpile up our petroleum. We won't be producing as much carbon dioxide, which will take the pressure off all the amount of carbon dioxide I've got in here, especially until I get those uh, the Sixter farms up and running completely. I've doubled down, and I've put down a second set of gas pumps. I've hooked them up to the same automation, and they're all the way up to the top of the map. So, well, that one is just freshly installed. I queued it up in the background. Uh, what's the yeah, so once this hit, so long as this is above 15 kilos in pressure, they'll keep pumping out the carbon dioxide. I want to try and get the steam layer to about here in, here in this design. Anyway, next project. Oh, this came up several times in the comments from several different people. They say the duplicates can hop up here, so I don't need those ladder segments. You are precisely correct. I'll just have to make a couple of minor alterations here. Uh, one is the heavy watt wire that I'm using. Uh, I should just move that out one tile, otherwise I can't replace the tiles in there should be a quick fix and there we go that's double insulated those tiles so they're not going to leak any heat out and my duplicates can still hop and up and down those two tiles oh and uh, i let out some polluted water here when i was uh, changing around these radiant pipes it accidentally dropped down but it was kind of semi on purpose the, the reason being i can now replace them with ceramic all the tiles down here i didn't have enough ceramic at the time but now i do i want to make sure this top layer is all made of ceramic the reason being it just uh, it's better at keeping the, the temperature transfer to a minimum. And the reason I left the water there is that should help stop any of the steam from escaping. Well, we'll find out. <laughs> Won't we? So I think a little bit of steam is getting out, but the, the liquid seal is sort of working, I think. Nope. Doesn't matter. I've managed to uh, replace most of those with ceramic. I think I'm pretty happy with that, and I don't think we lost too much or dumped too much heat in it. Ooh, there's a little bit of heat in the area. You know what? We've got that cooling loop going around. That'll take care of the problem. The aqua tuners kicked back in. And another little project completed. Another mess that I need to take care of is the piping around here. It is an absolute nightmare. The big cooling loop is chuck, chuck, uh, taking up a lot of space, and I don't have any real easy way of getting the water out of here into the tank, uh, up here, and making sure that I have an overflow that dumps some back in when I need it. So I'm going to shut this whole thing down, scrap it, and do a little bit of renovations. First things first, we'll just delete that little pipe segment there. That will stop all of that from flowing. And that way all the liquid that's going around the cooling loop will get dumped back into the liquid reservoir. And be kept out of the way. I'm pretty sure we've got enough... Yeah, this whole place is nice and chill for now. Wow, okay, maybe not that steam turbine. It's still cool enough. So we should be fine to do some works at least for 10 cycles or so, which should be more than plenty of time. I'm going to rip out all the piping and I'm going to replace it. It just needs to go. It's causing me too many headaches. So much better already. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of thinking here in the background and figure out how I can uh, do this so that I want to make sure that if there's too much water in here because the petroleum generators are dumping it in, it gets sucked out and sent to the storage tank. However, it's too warm in here, some of it gets siphoned back into the system to help cool the system down. I thought this was going to be self-sustaining, but or, well, self-cooling, but the temperature in here still seems to be going up quite regularly. So I'll just uh, skip forward a bit until after I figure out what I'm going to do. So, after much flim-flamming about, I finally managed to come up with a design that I think serves the functions as outlined. All this line along here does is it collects all the water from all five steam turbines, which can bring you up to 10 kilos of water per second, so this is the maximum it'll support. This line all flows across here, and it has this liquid shutoff. Now, that liquid shutoff is turned on and off by this temperature sensor. 
So the steam turbines will activate if there's more steam in here than there needs to be. And this detects what the temperature is like. If the temperature is below 150, then this turns it turns this liquid shut off on and that water just gets shunted up into this tank. But if the temperature is above 150, like it currently is, it starts dumping the water back into the system to start cooling the place down. Well, that's how it should work. And then once the place is cooled down, then the system will let the water go back up into the storage tank over here, which is... Yeah, got a decent amount of water in there, actually. And there we go. Problem solved. That should theoretically keep the whole place nice and cool. What's the temperature like down here? 139. Yeah, it's getting cooled down by the water that's dropping down from the top. Now all i got to do is replace all the cooling pipes so that this whole system doesn't overheat. And there we go. That looks so much cleaner. It's amazing what you can do if you just rip out the old stuff and put it in knowing what you're planning ahead of time. This is why I usually prefer to get my builds researched and done up in a debug map first before I even try and implement them in survival. It saves you so much time and potentially dying. Now, uh, these are all done. How many eggs we got backed up? Oh, we actually have several larvae eggs. When are these going to hatch? Pretty soon. You know what? I'll leave those larvae eggs in there. I'll sweep them out in a bit. Our slickster population is not nearly as big as I would like. We've got five, one, four. Oh, okay. That's that's just extremely painful. But our carbon dioxide pressure is gradually dropping. Our petroleum generators are not on constantly anymore because we have a, a power function set up and we're starting to get backups here on all our tanks. Soon, soon that will be normalized. Uh, next project on my list, I actually have a list of stuff I need to get done. Uh, it was going to be the poke shells, but I do want to get all this oil con uh, yeah, moved from this spot over into this one tank. I'm going through my oil quite quickly and I want to get it all condensed and then I want to get oil reservoirs tapped into and have more fresh oil pouring into the system. So, I'm going to install a couple of generators, a whole bunch of pumps, and then I'm going to just run multiple pumps to dump all the oil I can find everywhere. That pump needs to move down, you can go to about there. We are going to drain everything. Oh, you know what? We should probably get another pump over here as well. Everywhere where there's a low point, we are going to drain this entire area, dump it all into this one tank. Um, Yeah, that should be fine. I've never been very good at subtlety when it comes to this game, so I'm just simply throwing power at this problem to remove all the liquids from over here. A couple of ge coal generators, smart battery, hooked up to some liquid pumps, and I've got those liquid pumps pushing all the, the crude oil all the way across here, and we're going to dump it all into this one centralized tank. And even on the opposite side of that centralized tank, I'm setting up another little coal generator, smart battery, and I'm going to pump all the liquid from here and there. I'll mop up whatever petroleum or whatever's left behind when the time comes. But for now, I just want to get all the all of it centralized in one tank and be done with it. Then I think it'll be time to tap into these oil reservoirs. Those two are just no-brainers. They drop right down into this tank, though I might have to do some reshaping on the tank. That'll yeah, that'll definitely be an off-screen moment. Actually, there's three of them right here, which is enough to support my petroleum boiler. So if I just tap into those three, I'll have enough uh, oil to get, well, keep my petroleum boiler running infinitely. It should spit out enough water to keep those running perfectly though i'm not sure how good the water extraction from this system is just yet oh yeah what's the temperature down here okay the temperature down here is plummeting too much and the temperature up here is still too hot I, i'm not getting the temperature movement as fast as i would like that's not too bad it should get up there eventually it'll just be a slow process hmm. anyway i'll skip this forward a bit until all of those uh those, those fun little projects of uh, getting all this oil moved to the central tank is completed and then we can get on with uh, tapping into the oil reservoirs. And done. I've got all that infrastructure in to drain all these areas. They're all in the lowest point, so all the crude oil and petroleum and everything should flow down here, and I'll get dumped into the central tank. I've then uh, done a little bit of organized uh, redistribution of tiles so that all the, the oil should just flow down into this one center spot, into this one pump. So that'll provide all my oil for a while, and soon all of these areas will get drained. I've got liquid pumps everywhere. Oh, I never hooked that one up. Uh, I'll, I'll hook that one up once this area runs dry. It's fine. And these two areas are definitely going down as well. Perfect. I've even got a little stockpile of petroleum here. Uh, just from uh, stuff I managed to find along the way. Now, I was going to do up the rest of those, but I think the, or I was going to do up the oil wells, but I'm running low on time. So what I think I'm going to do instead, poke shells. Uh, I'll get the poke shells and centralize them in one spot. Now, let's see. Uh, oh, I need to get rid of some of these... Uh, stone hatches that are going around the place, though, be careful when you're trying to take these out. They, they do actually fight back, and they can hurt your duplicates. Never mind, that one has... Yeah, that. <laughs> there's not much hope for that one. 
But they can give you injuries, so do be careful. The stone hatches are a little bit tough. Ow! More diggity. Two points? Yeah, you'll be fine. You'll walk that off. You'll sleep it off in a couple of nights. Now, for doing this up, uh, what are we going to do? Yeah, we're going to put in a little drop here where we can drop off our... our s hmm. What the hell do you call them again? Poke shells? Yes. Where we can drop off the poke shells. Now, uh, drop off automatic dispensers. Make that out of copper ore. We drop these off in here. Then I need a drop of four tiles so the duplicates can't reach down to the bottom. So, one, two, three... Four. Yeah. And let's just leave it at the bottom for the time being. I'll finish that off in a second. So the plan will be, I'm going to collect all the poke shell eggs. Not the poke shells themselves. And I'm just going to drop them down in here. No need for wrangling, nothing like that. The dupes will just have to make one quick ja jaunt in, grab the any eggs that they drop, and then drop all the eggs in here. Nothing else will be able to reach in here bar those, uh, well, bar this auto sweeper, which I'm going to install. Uh, the auto sweeper will be put in there to remove the eggs. Uh, wait a minute. Ooh, I'm trying to think of something here. Will this auto sweeper try and fill up those? Hmm. One moment. Yeah, no, auto sweeper can fit right about there. Oh. You know what? That's unfortunate for you. You just had to go and make a nuisance of yourselves. If you can make it out of there before that brick gets in, you're fine. But you're not going to, are you? Oh, there's one. And, uh, yeah, you can... Uh, oh. oh, will the second one make it out? Come on. Nope. Out of the frying pan, back into the fire. <laughs> now, that should be it. And now all I'm going to do is... Oh, uh, these doors. I need to change them so they are unidirectional. The reason being, I'm also going to dump all my polluted dirt in here. One of the joyous things about uh, poke shells is they eat polluted dirt. So we're going to take all our polluted dirt from here and dump it into this section. Should be fairly simple. And this one here is going to dump in all the eggs. And that should be just about it for all the poke shells. It'll take about 100 cycles. Well, 100 cycles to pick up all the eggs because that's how long it takes them. Oh, there's one egg already, so that egg can, is no longer accessible to the duplicates. So they just keep dropping off all the pincher row eggs in here until there's none left on the map. So the current ones on the map will be fine, but any new ones will end up being dropped in here. Any new egg drops will end up in here. And then they'll eventually hatch, and I've set this up to handle uh, polluted dirt. Uh, you can be set to a much lower priority. We're going to set you to priority 1. This one here handles polluted dirt, and it's set to priority 2. Uh, not just polluted dirt, but it also handles rot piles as well. So all of those should eventually get in there. Once my duplicates get around to it, there's no real rush on that, to be honest. Now, all the malts and the eggshells that come out of these... Oh, and I've changed the save frequency. And uh, where is this? Options, game. Yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, auto save frequency. I've set it to every five cycles. That just makes such a difference to save times. It's only once every five cycles. So much more survival. Now, this we just set to... Eggshells and... Poke shell malt and poke shell malt. The reason there's two poke shell malts is there's two different types of them. There's the baby poke shell malt and then there's the adult poke shell malt. One of them happens when the baby turns into an adult and the other one happens when the adult turns into meat. So, well, actually, I don't think the poke shells drop meat. Well, I could be wrong. I haven't looked into that in a while. Let's see what the blueprints have. Anything amazing or just the basics? You know... I do like the look of Ellie, but I've already got 24 dupes, and I think I'm just going to stick at 24 for the time being. There's no need to go too crazy. Uh, Skills-wise, however, my Mechanicles is doing great. Baldrick, yep. Or is it uh, Crichton? So they're actually leveled up to three of the skills, and their athletics is up to 19. You know what? I am going to leave them there. Yeah, they can they can stay in there until their athletics hits about 20. I'm not letting them out dupes out now until they've hit about 20, 22 athletics. It just results in better duplicates. I should really go through. I'll do those skills off screen. So that's about that's about 30 minutes of footage. So I'm going to have to cut this out here. But uh, the no, oh, I'm just having this conveyor chute drop off the molts right here for now. That means my duplicates can pick them up and carry them over to this area where they're going to be crushed up in the rock crusher. Later on, I'll install a, a conveyor rail system. But at the moment, my copper ore is running a little bit low. I'm going to have to go on a massive deconstruction binge or massive mining thing and just mine out the rest of the map. But not quite yet. Uh, I don't want to mine out the map until I've got these oil wells in place. I want those oil wells up and running. Running. Once the oil wells are up and running, 
that means I have infinitely sustainable oil. The water that comes out of the petroleum boiler, well, the petroleum that comes out of the petroleum boiler, you burn in your petroleum generators, that gives out water. The water it gives out is more than the amount of water you'll have to put into the oil wells to fill up the petroleum generator. So it's a water positive process. So that means once I get the oil well set up and I'm, I'll be using this water to f power the oil wells, I should have an infinitely sustainable source of water, uh, well, infinitely sustainable source of power, which will give me an infinitely sustainable source of carbon dioxide, which will allow me to infinitely sustain these slicksters. I might remove some of these batteries and put in a second, a third, uh, well, sorry, a fifth slickster farm, but that should get me to perfect sustainability at that point. Well, maybe a little bit, I might be a little bit short on food, but I'll be so close it won't make a difference. At that point, I can rip all of this out and do decor. So the next, uh, I think the next episode will be getting the oil wells up and running and then decoring this whole place up to the absolute eyeballs. Anyway, hope you enjoyed and uh, good luck.